I only have uh, 25 minutes, so I have to get uh, started really quickly. I, uh, unfortunately, I have a lot of slides, so I have to talk uh, very fast. But I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that uh, you can process this information even faster than I can talk. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure about that. So uh, it's 15:30. Uh, just uh, kick off and see if anybody else uh, drops in. I have to warn: there's no AI in this presentation. Because <laughs> 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 there's plenty of other presentations about AI, but don't run away. You say? Completely human. It's okay. So thank you for all uh, the friends in here. So thank you all for turning up for this presentation about accordions, carousels, and pop-ups. And we'll have a quick look at, in these 25 minutes, whether these will be uh, ingredients for a delicious website or if they are a recipe for disaster. And I'm already disappointed you. The answer is probably somewhere in between. And also the answer will be something like, it depends. But let's see. Um, a quick note about myself, my name is Boris Duisburg, I'm from Utrecht here, uh, so a home uh, game uh, for me today, great. I'm a Drupal developer at uh, Finalis, and my name on Drupal.org is Batigolix, uh, so I work for Finalis, a company specialized in Drupal websites for the health and education sector. And uh, Finalis is a sponsor of the Drupal community, uh, also a sponsor of today's event, as you can see on the screenshot of the sponsors. We also have a very small logo, but it's because we are very modest. <laughs> <laughs> so on the menu for today, uh, first I will be looking at carousels, then first I will be looking at accordions, I'm sorry for this, then at carousels and pop-ups. Uh, for all these three, we look at what the advantages and disadvantages are, and what the common accessibility and usability issues are with these three techniques, and uh, the things that can be done to make it more usable and accessible. Uh, there's plenty of accessibility uh, presentations today, and I've heard a couple of times before uh, the, uh, the information that's on this slide, actually the fact that accessibility uh, benefits so much more audiences than you may think at first uh, instance. It's not only people with uh, physical disabilities, but it's the, the audience is much larger and can even include you in some situations where you're not able to use uh, the full potential of a browser or if you're behind a, a wheel driving and you need to look up some information which I think is not allowed. <laughs> uh, that's called a situational disability. So uh, accessibility is for much more than uh, you may think. So let's go quickly to the first uh, topic. Those are the accordions, well known, I think, for, ev for everybody. Most uh, well known one uh, will be the FAQ, I guess. And uh, as a definition of accordions, um, using uh, that it is a list of headers, and those headers you can uh, click on, and you can expand them, and then a panel is being revealed that contains more information. And that list together makes up the accordion. Uh, it's great because it shows the content in a progressive way. So the page uh, comes much uh, shorter, and uh, the page will be less daunting for a visitor. So it's a great tool for making pages uh, easier to process. Uh, also great for mobile devices because the page becomes much shorter. It gives the, uh, the visitor a direct idea of what the whole page is about because he has a kind of a table of contents thanks to the accordion. And it also lets users focus on one very specific task. It has disadvantages as well because it's, uh, it has a higher interaction cost because uh, if you want to read the full content of the page, you have to open each uh, of the headers and you have to figure out how the accordion works. So it's much more uh, mental work for you than just scrolling a page. Uh, everything, anything that's in the hidden panels may be overlooked, so that may be a problem. And things like printing can also be very challenging when you're using accordions. Um, a couple of common accordion issues uh, that you see on uh, lots of pages is the fact that the headers are not focusable, so you cannot reach them with the keyboard, and also means you cannot open any of the panels with the, the keyboard, so that's problematic. 
often uh, icons and styling is missing, so you cannot immediately see that it is an accordion, and you have no visual clues that there's something hidden that you can open something, so that's uh, also problematic. Uh, a missing outline on the element that has a focus is also very common for uh, accordions, and uh, the fact that a panel uh, automatically closes when another one opens. So that's something that uh, should be avoided at all times. Um, I would also like to have a look at real life accordion issues. So uh, what I did was I uh, had a Teams meeting with a colleague of mine. Uh, I recorded the Teams meeting and I show you small, very small uh, samples of it. And it's, uh, I did this with uh, Jasper and he's, uh, he's visually impaired and he uses the screen reader to to browse the web. And we're, together we're looking at a recipes uh, website. And uh, I have to apologize beforehand because it's a bit chaotic because you will hear the screen reader. He uh, is reading what's on the screen, that's what screen readers do. And then there's my colleague Jasper, he's trying to explain what he's doing and the difficulties he encounters. And then there's me now and then saying something very stupid that I could edit it out because I'm not that good in editing software. So. Let's have a look, uh, see where's the play button, is it here? No, it's not here, sorry. Do not. Apparently the FAQ does not. Sorry, sm smaller introduction. We're looking at FAQ here and he's trying to uh, open uh, one of the FAQ uh, the accordion items to see what uh, the information is inside. And uh, now if... I have any headers, so... One down for portion is what about these standards? Ah, oh. One, read our FAQs for more information. Read our FAQs, but it's, it's not a header, so usually okay. I use headers to navigate uh, through a page. So yeah, that's would it seem nice if this was like uh, H1, H2? Yeah. Anyway, apparently with the tab key, it just skips over all the FAQs, and we end up somewhere in the footer where it is an advertisement. Yeah. Well, I hope so I can use my, my arrow keys on the keyboard to uh, navigate down the page. What about the standards? How did you work out the prices? Mm -hmm. Which supermarket did you get the prices from? Yeah, it reads it, but it really? doesn't tell me that it's... So I can click now. It doesn't tell me that. I can try. Is microwave cooking safe? Yeah. Is microwave cooking safe? Let's see what happens here. Banner, cobbling, Jamie Oliver. Yeah, uh, if you buy recipes, try to uh, read the cooking policy. Uh, really? They win. Uh, that is yeah. not what I press enter on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what you're seeing is there's uh, uh, the accordion, uh, the items, they do not get the focus, and he, the user does not get any clue that uh, uh, where he is and whether it's clickable, so he's not able to open it at all. And, when he tries, he ends up on completely the wrong page. So there's uh, uh, lots of issues with uh, that accordion, and this is uh, quite common, uh, I have to say. Um, to make accordions more usable and accessible, the headers, they should be a very good summary of any of the content that's hidden in the, in the panels. And uh, clear icons have to be used, so it's clear that uh, a panel can be expanded. And you have to be able to open all the panels, so none of the panels should be closed automatically and uh, should be able to uh, move through all the elements in the accordion with the top and shift cap keys and uh, elements that are inside the hidden uh, panels they should never receive any focus as long as they are hidden uh, you probably need the javascript to uh, achieve that um, when the focus is on one of the headers you should be able to open them with the enter and the space uh, buttons on your keyboard uh, for the markup, you need to use the button element for the headers. Uh, we saw in the video that the user is uh, looking for uh, header uh, elements, but they can be, um, uh, you can put the button inside the header element. And, but you need to use the button for uh, opening the panels. Then, um, a couple of area attributes should be used, so those uh, uh, communicate to the screen reader some extra information on what a uh, part of the web page uh, is about. 
And uh, for the headers, you need to use the area controls attribute, which should refer to the ID of the panel. And then for the same um, element for the header, you need to use the area expanded attribute, which should be set to true when the uh, panel is open. Then the panels, they should have the area labeled by attribute uh, so that they can have a title. Okay. I uh, also should note that it's possible to make uh, accordions with native elements, uh, details and summary. Uh, that's always, it's always preferable to use uh, native elements, but they are not supported by all the browsers and they also, you also have to test it with various screen readers to see if it works well. That's it for the accordions. This brings us to the second uh, topic, which are the carousels, also known as the sliders. I think everybody's favorite. Um, uh, quick definition again. Uh, carousels, they contain slides. Often they have a next and previous button. Uh, there's often a pause button and a slider picker. Uh, those are shown here on the screenshot. Uh, the great advantage, of course, of the carousel is that you can put a lot of information on one uh, small uh, spot on your website. Often that's the most important part of the website, uh, on the home page, uh, above the fold, uh, under the logo. That's where everybody wants this information to appear. So the carousel is a kind of uh, solution for this. And it does uh, improve the chance that some content is actually sometimes visible. So that's great. And it's uh, the perfect tool for letting users explore things, uh, compare things. You can think of uh, the usage in gallery images, but also a product gallery, and think of websites like Booking and all kind of other uh, e-commerce websites where uh, carousels are used uh, a lot for letting people explore things. But with advantages also come disadvantages, yes, there they are. Uh, quite a lot of research has been done on carousels and it's shown that almost nobody sees the second, third or fourth or whatever slide. They only see the first one, but they never take the effort to uh, check out any of the other slides in the, in the carousel. Uh, so they, it has quite a bad reputation because of that. Uh, especially when they auto-rotate, they are considered uh, distracting and even annoying and there's uh, completely no standards for any of the navigation controls so you never know where to find the next uh, the previous button maybe above or the left or the right there's no standards for that so that's problematic common issues with carousels the fact that the uh, slide content is being announced at the screen reader when it's out of rotating which can be quite annoying uh, the fact that there's a pause button missing when there's auto-rotation going on, that's also problematic. A missing focus outline is often... Uh, uh, a focus outline is often missing from elements inside the carousels. And, uh, yeah, there's... Uh, in general, focus problems are um, quite common with uh, carousels. Uh, sometimes it's the, the, uh, the other way around, that things that are in the slides that are not visible uh, do get focus, which also should not happen. And then I would like to have another look at a, uh, the video that I did with my colleague, and now he's trying to uh, visit this webpage. He wants to know something about the recipes of the week, but the carousel decides that it wants to get all the attention. Okay. Every time when the carousel uh, changes slide, it uh, reads uh, the content of energy measurement. Exactly. <laughs> so even if I want to go down the page, we can, we can easy recipes escape to the menu with our yes. recipes of the week. Can I go to the recipes of the week? Yes. Cook with Jamie. I want to read the recipes of the week, but it doesn't let me. Okay. The Jamie Oliver, the Jamie Oliver Cookery School. Choose from more than thirty classes. All not okay, minus four. Now, so uh, I don't know where you are on this page. I don't know either. I mean, the complete focus is on the, it's on the carousel, if you now... Public. Yes, now you should be... Yeah, one more? Next. Oh, no, I've got the next. Cook with yeah, clothes. Now this you one can is this and year-round good eating with Easy Wins by Anna Jones. 
Yeah, okay, so quite an annoying uh, experience if you're trying to visit a web page uh, with a, a badly designed carousel uh, with your uh, screen reader. Uh, but there are things that can be done to improve them. Um, uh, for usability, it's uh, good to put the controls inside the slider, so it's easier for a, per for a visitor to recognize that the controls actually belong to this specific slider. Uh, reduce the amount of slides, uh, use the slider picker so people get an idea of how many slides there are. And you can use the bleeding technique as shown in this picture, which also indicates that there is more to uh, discover. And auto-rotation, if, if you get a chance, make sure it's uh, disabled because uh, people will um, associate your slider with an advertisement and they will automatically stop looking at it at all. So if you have the chance, uh, no, don't do any auto rotation. Um, for the ex keyboard accessibility, you, uh, if you have a pause button, make sure it's the first uh, element that gets the focus, so it can be immediately stopped. Then the top shift up key should be uh, available for moving through all the elements that are inside the slider. Um, the controls should act like buttons, so you can press them with. You can control it with the space and the enter button, and then the slider you should be able to control it with the left and the right arrow of your keyboard. Um, all the controls, so the next, previous, etc. Uh, uh, elements, they should use the button element, and they should have a uh, area label attribute which explains what the action is that's, uh, that can be uh, undertaken with the, uh, with the button, and it should have an area controls attribute. Uh, that should point to the ID of the slides wrapper. So it explains to the screen reader uh, which part of the website can be controlled with this specific button. Uh, the carousel itself should have the area role description attribute uh, explaining to the screen reader that it is a carousel and then each slide should have the same attribute explaining that it is a slide. And then the slide itself should have the area label attribute uh, which gives information about the order of the slides. Which brings me to the pop-ups. Some time left. Uh, also known as dialogues. Uh, that's because it, it kind of resembles a, a dialogue between a user and a computer system. And there uh, uh, we make the distinction between modal and non-modal dialogues. The modal dialogues are the ones where the page underneath the pop-up is kind of disabled are not available for any interaction. So often it's blacked out, as you can see in this uh, screenshot. There's a nice pop-up, and there's a black page underneath, I think you all know this, but that is what's called a modal dialog. They're great, because they uh, help uh, users focus on one very specific task on the website. So that makes them very good for, using, uh, for uh, giving the user important warnings, including cookie. Uh, preference messages, and also to prevent errors. Um, also, pop-ups can be used to fragment something which is very complex into smaller steps. Unfortunately, there's also some disadvantages because it's almost never used for essential information. It's very often used for uh, signups sign -ups and other crap. And it increases the interaction cost, like as this Twitter user uh, correctly uh, mentions. It requires uh, the immediate attention of a user and it kind of interrupts the workflow so people tend to forget uh, what they are visiting the website for because of all the pop-ups that they need to uh, get rid of. Uh, the most common pop-up issues are that the, the element in the pop-up does not perceive any focus so you are able to open it with the keyboard but the, the focus is not placed inside the pop-up, which, uh, which should be the case, but that's often problematic. And then when, you, uh, um, when you're moving the focus through the pop-up, then often the focus does not stay inside, which also should be done, but often it just moves outside of the pop-up and continues somewhere in the page. Sometimes it continues in the page underneath the pop-up, uh, so you get completely lost. Uh, another problem is that the close button is often missing, or any close possibility. Uh, 
Um, I have another video here for you. Um, we are trying, this is this, uh, the same Teams uh, meeting, we're trying to open the, uh, the, okay, I can point it out here, this Add to Favorites, this is a pop-up, because I figured it out before, and uh, my colleague tries to open it and use it. We have a pop-up here that allows you to add this recipe to your favorites. That's it, yes. pop-up link. Yeah, we found it already, that's our time. If I press enter, yes. the second one says, here, add the favorites, add buttons. I can't find it with the tab key, so that's nice. It's a button, apparently. Great. I pressed enter, so it should be open, but I don't know if it's open. It doesn't grab the focus if I use my arrow keys. Want to make this later? Sign into that into your favorites. Well, it sounds right. It sounds like I'm in the pop up, so at least it's, it opens in the right place. Link, okay. sign in. Link, register. Register. Close tooltip, button. Close tooltip. Link, link, sign in. Need to sign in then. Of course, we don't have an account here. Close tooltip, link, shopping list. We end up at the shopping list, I guess. That's oh. the, the rest of the page. Yes, but the pop-up stays open, but you can continue Close to okay. but browsing through the, through the page. Yeah, let's see what happens. Broccoli and cheese soup recipe, add to favorites. Yeah, close it, I end up back at the uh, add to favorites button. Okay. So. That's not too bad. No, that, that kind of makes me happy. It's not okay. Nice. So the, uh, <coughs> he manages to open the pop-up button, the focus does not get inside the pop-up, so he needs to figure out how to, uh, yeah, how to get inside, and then, um, but he keeps on tapping, the, the, the pop-up stays open, which isn't uh, terrible for the screen reader user, but it could be improved. The uh, second example is that a pop-up opens, but it's, the screen reader has no clue at all, so it's there, but it's, impossible to get in, uh, and that's because the, the HTML block that contains the pop is completely at the bottom of the, uh, the web page, while it should be directly next to the element that opened the uh, But yeah, he opens a pop-up, but he has no clue. Has the um, nutritional info, um, and I happen to know that this is the pop-up as well. Nutrition info, and the shopping link. link. Nutrition info. Impressive. At least I can find it with my tab key. Nice. Did something happen? So I would like to show the nutrition info. info. Link, nutrition info. Method show ingredient quantity. Show ingredients quantity. One of five level one. Heading level one. Heat the two teaspoon olive oil in a large saucepan over medium heat. So yeah, so he never he never notices that this uh, pop-up is open. This can also be an advantage because uh, he, uh, he's not aware of uh, the cookie uh, uh, pop-up. So, oh. yeah, he, he, he's, for him, this is just the information about the, the, the recipe that he wants to cook. He's never noticed any uh, cookie uh, pop-up, which is problematic for us because we cannot read the page, but he can. Yeah, the pop-up here. So, yeah. And now we at the moment, uh, yeah. So right. actually, the cookie pop-up is not bothering you because you're just able to use the full um, yeah. the so complete functionality of the website that's underneath, right? Let's see what kind of recipe you got here. Let's see if have a heading one. One yeah. pepper, beet, green rice, and fish. Heading level one. Mm -hmm. Heading one. With yeah. the aerosol yogurt and lemon. Yeah, I can still read one of them. Entire recipe. Link. Gluten free. Turn regular rice into something extraordinary. Okay, so I'm not So to uh, to make the pop-ups more useful, uh, include a close button so it can be closed. Uh, also allow to close the pop-up by clicking outside of the pop-up, and make sure that uh, when the pop-up opens, that the focus is automatically set on the either the close button or something not so destructive inside the pop-up. Um, so, 
when it opens, uh, as I said, the focus should be moved immediately inside uh, the dialog, inside the pop-up, and the tab and shift tab key should be uh, usable for moving through all the elements. If you reach the last element, and if you tap again, then you should go to the first element in the pop-up, or as an alternative, you could also close the pop-up. Also make sure the escape button uh, works for closing the pop-up. Then the, uh, the element that opens the pop-up should, uh, should use the <coughs> button HTML element, and it should have an area control attribute which points to the ID of the pop-up. The pop-up itself should have a... Could you tell me that time stopped. Okay. Can I have one more minute? One minute. Okay. <laughs> so, that's nice. Great. I read up. Uh, there's uh, in, well, the general thing, you have to use the correct elements, so the button element. Always make sure the top and the shift tab keys work. The order, focus order is correct. And has uh, the focus should have a good outline. Make sure you test everything. If you use a Cordial Carousel's pop ups make sure you're only using your very specific use cases and be aware that you are introducing usability and accessibility issues always face. But you can uh, use JavaScript and CSS libraries that help you circumvent these problems. And then I hand over uh, to uh, Wolf because uh, he has a <laughs>